Good morning all, please have a seat. Welcome to the Grade 9 and 10 Awards Ceremony. It brings us a moment to reflect on the year's achievements and to acknowledge success and effort in a variety of areas. If we could reflect further back through centuries and more, we would see members of the Cowichan tribes fishing, raising families and hunting the land surrounding us. Their ancestors traveling widely through the Coast Salish area, exploring the Gulf Islands and setting up their traditional summer base camp on what is now Vancouver Airport. We acknowledge that this place and the territories nearby are steeped in their history and culture, filled with their footsteps, and we're grateful to be able to live and express ourselves as our feet tread this territory today. I will now invite Ms. Amara Armstrong, the Director of Academic Senior School, to come forward and say a few words. Good morning, Senior School. I too am privileged to learn from and with the Coast Salish Nations, and I'm grateful to live on the unceded Quetzin territories of the Halkamenim speaking people. It's important for us to recognize and honor the indigenous communities that have lived on this land since time immemorial. Haichka. Today, we will celebrate the many accomplishments of you, our students. These accomplishments will demonstrate personal rigor, efficacy, critical thinking, and possibly some hardship. But at the end of the day, what do these awards really say about you? And how will you transfer your accomplishments to the wider world? I want to share with you a powerful excerpt from a poem called The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman, the first American National Youth Poet Laureate, which she recited at the inauguration of the US president in 2021. She beautifully wrote, when day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. These words, full of courage and hope, remind us of the transformative power that lies within each one of us. On May 24th of this year, it came to the world's attention that this very poem was banned from a school in Florida due to a single parent complaint claiming the poem is not educational, indirectly includes hate messages, and indoctrinates students. Unquestioned, the poem was removed. This incident highlights an alarming increase in book banning and censorship across North America. But you might be asking yourself, why should I care about something that happened in a school in Florida? Sapere ade a Latin phrase meaning dare to know or have courage to use your own reason. What actions can you take to ensure that you have all of the information you need to make an informed critical decision about your place in the world? You have heard me mention Margaret Atwood previously because my imagination was captured by her literary works when I was in high school. I'm reminded specifically of her dystopian novel, The Handmaid's Tale. Here it is here. In this novel, Atwood writes, tell rather than write because I have nothing to write with and writing is, in any case, forbidden. This chilling portrayal of a future where freedom of thought, opinion and expression are banned serves as a cautionary tale. The Handmaid's Tale was part of my grade 10 English class syllabus. I was equally fascinated and horrified by it. The dystopia felt like an act of tremendous fictional brilliance on the part of Atwood an impossibility in a society where I myself enjoyed what I thought were inalienable rights and freedoms. It depicted a world in which a dictatorial theocratic government controls the state, restricts personal liberties, and dehumanizes its citizens, with a particular focus on subjugating women. While we read it as a work of fiction, its relevance and resonance with our present times cannot be ignored. According to Pan America, during the first half of the 22-23 school year, there were 1,477 instances of individual, individual books banned in the US, an increase of 28% compared to the prior six months. Overwhelmingly, book banners continue to target stories written by and about people of color and two-spirit LGBTQ individuals. 
In a world where we once thought that schools were bastions of free speech, belief, and conscience, we now know that some of our intellectual contemporaries are at risk of being silenced. Students, like yourselves, are losing access to literature and the opportunity to formulate their own opinions using critical thought. The Handmaid's Tale, a novel that was written in 1985, has remained a prescient and prominent literary selection on high school course outlines for decades. It is currently banned in 13 American school districts in six American states. One of these states, Oregon, is right next door to British Columbia. Would you be surprised to know that it has been continuously challenged in Canada as well? Reflecting upon recent events and literary bans, I have found myself contemplating what I stand for, and more importantly, what I'm willing to stand up to. Perhaps you as high school students may not yet have considered the weight of your own legacies. However, I urge you to ponder how you can affect change and what you stand for, but more importantly, what are you willing to stand up to? Every time this year that you've nailed a regional science fair presentation, aced a test or assignment, jumped a bigger jump at Thunderbird, raised your placard at Queen Mun, won a provincial qualifying soccer match, presented for Stigma Free Month, performed for Clue, played at the spring concert, or cheered on Marcus and Willie as they threw the ball that would dunk the head and deputy head of school during pride celebrations, you are learning. But to what end? The Historical Thinking Project takes this question one step further. Who decides what and whose stories to tell, and how do we know what we know? Our core values emphasize the importance of being true to oneself, of being you, but also to serve you bravely. What impact will you choose to make or not to make? You have elected to be a QMS student, to attend our school for the express purpose of learning. Likewise, we have chosen you. This isn't just about learning that's confined to the classroom. However, it does call upon you to be an active participant in this transaction with the incredible gift of agency and freedom of thought. Think about your favorite novel, your story, song, or movie. How might you feel if you once had the freedom to read it, to listen to it, to share it, or to view it, only now to find that it was censored? What if the banning went beyond books to include your identity, gender, language, or culture? These questions challenge us to examine the world we live in and the values we hold dear. As intellectuals and thinkers, and you all are, I ask you to consider the consequences of censorship and the importance of preserving and elevating diverse voices and narratives. Albert Camus, the philosopher, wrote, the only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. So I encourage you to share your own stories and the stories of others widely and freely. To reiterate the banned words of Amanda Gorman, when day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and the notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it, Somehow, we do it. Congratulations on your many accomplishments in your academic journey this year. Where will your learning take you next? What are you willing to stand up for? And more importantly, what are you willing to stand up to? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amara Armstrong, for sharing your thoughts with us this morning and for asking some really important questions. I think now's an appropriate time for us all to show our appreciation for Ms. Amara Armstrong's exceptional leadership and service to our academic program here at QMS. <laughs> so as we move into the awards, if your name's called, please stand up and move into the aisle. If you're an individual winner, please come forward immediately to the front and receive your award. If you're named as part of a group, please organize yourselves as you move forward into the order in which the group has been read out. This is it's highly challenging. Um, you might not think so, but it is. You've got to listen very carefully. As an audience, if a group is being called, please hold your applause until the group list has been read out. Shake, then take. Okay, so when you come up to the front, 
Mr. Mara Armstrong or whoever the presenter is, put their hand out for a handshake and then I'll hand you your award afterwards. And we'll take a picture of all major award winners outside the chapel at the end of this ceremony. I'd now I'd like to invite Mr. Mara Armstrong forward to present the following academic awards. Progress Awards. This award is for improvement over the school year. In grade nine, Avery Charette, and grade 10, Rose Wu. Progress in English, awarded to a student for whom it is their second language. In grade 10, Aina Hori. <laughs> Progress awards for fine arts, and there are three in this category. Visual arts, grade 8, 9, Tommy Gu. Drama, grade 8, 9, Tegan Yakimovich. And media arts, grade 8, 9, Leon Tsuboy. Phillips Progress for Music Award, Bradley Ludvigson. <laughs> service pins are earned by students who've contributed to their communities with the exceptional gift of service, having volunteered for a hundred or more hours of service. There are six students in this category. Sedona Bond, Jasmine Dale, Clara Van Mooswinkel, Jason Cheng, Rose Spivak, and Rui Wang. Thank you, Ms. Amara Armstrong. I'd now like to invite Ms. Dobby to present the equestrian pins. Rider pins are awarded to the following four riders. Nika Kemla, Gabe's House, Stephen Lee, Hughes House, Miu Uzami, Hughes House, and Jayan Shi, Hughes House. Master pins. Recipients must be enrolled in the equestrian program for at least one year, must successfully complete equine studies, and must be senior riders who exhibit skills and knowledge to look after horses in their care while maintaining a high standard of stable management. There are two recipients, Nika Kemler and Bella Kemler. I'll now invite Ms. Mara Armstrong forward again. Academic pins. Criteria are premised on passion, effort, achievement, and consistency. In grade nine, the grade nine English pin to Hannah Kodrick.
the Grade 9 Social Studies and the Grade 9 Language to Eliana Lindsay Graham. Grade 9 Math, Sierra Preakshot. And Grade 9 Science, Jula Sun. In Grade 10, Grade 10 English, Rui Wang. Grade 10 Social Studies, Alex Wayne Winterholt. <laughs> Grade 10 Language, Abigail Lapointe. Grade 10 Math. <laughs> one's working with one's notes. In grade nine, okay. Um, we will address that after chapel. <laughs> grade 10 math, Megumi Fujita. <laughs> grade 10 science, Jayan Ji. Top students for junior PE, Ellie Williams and Aryan Paha. Merit roll. To reach merit roll status, the student must have received a very good or excellent effort as a final mark for each course. I'll invite students up in groups of four or five. In grade nine, Avery Charette, Alexa Erickson, Charlie Zazula, and Emma Greenwood. Fisher Ingledew, Jacob Miner, Joshua Thompson, and Kaylee Harmon. Leo Lee, Marcus Sherania, Nina Steves, Sedona Bond, and William McMillan. Leo Lee, Marcus Sherania, Nina Steves, Sedona Bond, William McMillan. Audios, organize.
you. Grade 10. Jasmine Dale, Aaliyah Ewart, Carter Zubak, Charlie Huang, and Haruka Hasebe. Jake Armstrong, Joey Huang, Jordan He, Maggie Preston, Mateen Taggy. Mitchell Kistoff, Nika Kemler, Rose Spivak, Savannah Screeton, Tia Wilson. And we'll go back to the Grade 10 Language Award. My apologies for reading out Abigail's name, and my apologies to the winner as well, who can now come up and receive her language pin. Rose Wu. Thank you, Mr. Mara Armstrong. I now invite Mr. Wang forward to present the Waterloo Math Competition Awards. We host the Waterloo Math Competition annually to challenge students on their math skills and to see how they fare against other students in the same age group. For each of the contests below, if a student scores within the top 25% globally, they receive a certificate of distinction and the top score in our school receives a medal. Canadian Intermediate Math Contest. Certificates of distinction to Sean Zhang and Andy Pan and the medal to Sean Zhang. The Galois Contest, restricted to Grade 10. Certificates of Distinction to Wakako Hagiwara and, ha and Haruka Hasebe with a, with a medal to Wakako. <laughs> Popular winners, well done. Thank you, Mr. Wang. That concludes the award ceremony. If you were a winner, please wait outside for a photograph once you leave, and I'll now hand over to the head of school to say a few words. Thank you. So putting together these ceremonies, uh, as you know, is, is a little more challenging uh, than it looks. To get everything flowing, seamlessly requires an awful lot of preparation and, and care and attention. And I want to thank Mr. Monroe for doing this so well, seamlessly, again this morning. So Mr. Monroe, well done, thank you. I want to thank Mr. Mara Armstrong for such a powerful and uh, relevant message. At this particular time in the 21st century, um, there, are, there are attitudes and postures and positions coming at us from all over the place all the time, right? And the only thing that's going to save us from ruin is education. 
is opening our minds, being curious, exploring, not swallowing everything we read or hear. It's all, it was ever thus, but it's even more thus now, right? I've often been asked the question, believe it or not, in the past, what's the greatest danger to the future of civilization? And no, it's not a nuclear war. And no, it's not another pandemic. It's ignorance. It's ignorance. Ignorance where people choose not to know, are not interested in knowing about other people, about each other. And uh, that in itself produces the extreme behaviors that we're just becoming all too familiar with. So in our little corner of the world, and hopefully as we go out, it's the ripple effect. We, we take our learnings and our values here and we take them out into the world and try and make a difference wherever we are around us. But in our little corner of the world, we reject narrow-minded, censor-banning-oriented approaches to life. We just reject them. So, and uh, I encourage you to keep adopting that, uh, that, that open mind, that pursuit of, of really understanding, because there's always more to learn. Take it from someone who's spent, well, an enormous amount of time learning and continues to do so every single day, right? So you're at the beginning, relatively so, of your journeys. Keep that open mind and keep learning and, uh, and reject narrow-mindedness. Thank you. Um, on, on that rather somber note, I, uh, I do want to congratulate all of your, the award winners and I do want to thank you all, everyone here, including the adults in the chapel, for your contributions to another pretty special school year. We've got, to, we've got to take a moment at times to just reflect where we are and what we've done. And we're in a good place as a school, I have to tell you. We, are, are in, in, in the leadership, are immensely proud of what's going on. And uh, with that said, we have to just keep building on that. We can't sit back and rest on our laurels. So keep up the good work. We're not at the finish line quite yet. As those of you who've ever been involved in a race know that you don't stop rowing when you get to the 100 meter mark. You don't stop running when you just hit the home straight. You keep it going right to the end and finish well. Thank you. <laughs>